Welcome to rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine. This is part 12, preparing to make the new slide valve. And here is the drawing, and here is a piece of gun metal. And what I have to do is create the slide valve that you can see on the drawing from this piece of metal. First thing to do is to use the linisher or belt sander to remove most of the sand scale, because sand scale on cast metal can blunt the tool. By removing this rough skin, it also makes the metal easier to mark out. I need to mark out a piece one and a quarter inches long, and as you can see here, I'm doing it a sixteenth oversize. This will allow me to machine each end of the slide valve blank and get a very good surface finish when the valve blank is milled down to its finished dimension of one and a quarter inches in length. I'm assuming that everyone watching this has never done anything like this before, so if you have, just forward on to the next section. This clip shows me using my very old bandsaw to cut the piece to length. And don't forget, it's currently a sixteenth of an inch oversize. Usual health and safety disclaimer, when doing a job like this, always wear PPE, personal protective equipment. But you don't need any PPE for using a ruler to mark out the work. In the clip currently running, I'm comparing the old valve with the piece of gun metal I'm about to machine. I do notice that on the old valve, and when I check it with the ruler, it confirms it is a little bit short. No surprises there then, the original valve is such a mess, none of the dimensions are correct. So after a quick look at the dimensions that I need, an inch and a quarter by three quarters of an inch, it's over now to the milling machine. Fitted to the milling machine is this face cutter. I've had this for quite a long while, and I use it when I need to remove a lot of metal at one go. As my milling machine is a mill drill of Taiwanese origin, it makes a bit of a row cutting with this but it does the job and it gets rid of more metal quickly. And here it is in action. Most of the rattling you can hear is actually the cover at the top. And even though it's a fairly crappy machine, and a very battered machine vice because it's done a lot of work, it still does what it needs to do. When you're doing a job like this, it's a really good idea not to rush it. Don't be frightened of the cutting tool, it's very nasty, but provided you keep your fingers out of the way, you shouldn't have a problem. The idea of using this tool is to make the block square, so now I have one known flat surface. And now that I have this one flat surface, it's time to turn the piece over in the machine vise. By using a suitable piece of packing that I also know is level, I can remove some metal from the other side, and we end up with two surfaces that are fully parallel. This clip shows me tapping the piece of gun metal with a soft faced hammer. This is just to make sure that the piece is held properly in the machine vise. You can tell by the sound, but it does take a bit of practice to hear it. As a general rule, if you're taking a deep cut, traverse slowly. If you're taking a shallow cut, you can traverse a little quicker. But please, not as quick as this. This video is speeded up, just because the process is very slow. The speed that you can go at is really governed by the strength of the milling machine. But do be careful, if you break a tool, not a facing cutter like this, but an ordinary milling tool, it can be really bad. I once did that. The milling cutter snapped, and it whistled past my ear and embedded itself in the concrete wall of my workshop. No such events this time. Here's a finished block. What I'm doing here is rubbing the block up and down on a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. This removes all the sharp edges. And when I check the dimensions with the ruler, I'm quite pleased. It's three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter inches long. Any proper engineers need to turn off immediately. Because what I'm doing here is I'm laying the finished part on top of the drawing. As the drawing is one to one, it's showing me that my piece is the right size. This has never bothered me. I've done it on most of the things that I've built when I've had a drawing that's one to one. When building model aircraft, and I've built plenty of those, you put the plan down on a piece of board, and then you pin the pieces of balsa to the board and glue everything together, and finally remove the pins and remove the piece of aeroplane, and it's the right size. So unashamedly, I show you how to do this. More in the next section on making the valve. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.